I was listening to the story about, it was a story of a family in Washington and the little boy called the Bigfoot the Cowboy Man. And he had, apparently it had made an effort to steal this kid. And it hit me. My children were in that playpen behind me with nothing but a mosquito net over them. It could have crept up behind me and taken both of my children and I wouldn't have known. father just got like a Mustang or something from Wyoming, okay? He had it out in the corral because he couldn't put it in the barn, with the, in the stalls with the other horses that would kick and made all the other horses nervous. Had a Seminole Indian working the horse trying to break it every day. So they had it out in the corral. This skunk ape snuck up behind this horse and grabbed it on its hind quarters. This particular horse kicks out, jumps over the corral, runs into the pasture, you know, to get away. At this point, the rancher's out there just blasted away with the dirty, dirty. Skunk ape runs into the swamp. I went up there uh, one day after that, or two days after that, I went up there and sat in silence up there and it i'm telling you man it was free it was crazy you know it was it, there was a crazy vibe up there still i did what i could to kind of get things under control but i told her i said you need to get off this problem i, I feel like no matter how strong you are it's almost like standing in the ocean you can't stand still without moving your feet you're going to get knocked over eventually no matter how strong whatever it, you, you can't withstand a barrage of, of weird spiritual energy What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Paranormal Odyssey Live. I'm your host, Wayne, joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Miss Tiffany. What's up, ma'am? Oh, not too much. What is it Brian says? Hanging in like a hair on a biscuit? Hair in a biscuit. I think I think my biscuit's a little doughy tonight, <laughs> but I'm hanging in yeah. there. You've been busier in a one-armed paper hanger? Yeah, just... just <laughs> I'm telling you, getting everything, making sure everything. Carrie's going on a field trip in the morning. We got to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Oh, heck yeah. Um, Heck no. Nice. No. <laughs> well, she's excited. You know what she's excited about tonight? That she has an outlet that she can plug her phone and her headphones in directly at her seat. I would be excited about that, too. <laughs> so excited. I sent her pictures that she's only been on a school bus. She's never been on an Abbott bus. So she has, I told her, I said, this ain't your mama's school bus. <laughs> hmm. Yep. So she's excited. Or, is it Naoma? What's she say? Bigger than a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Troy not to be outdone. Busier than a cat covering turds in a sandbox. <laughs> Yep. I was supposed to make a phone call today. And his name is Chris Miller. And I totally did not make that phone call. And I feel so bad. Yeah, I feel so bad about that. And I messaged him and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was just crazy. It's Yeah, you read underneath your name right there, right? Was it? Yeah, I mean, associate producer? yeah. And, you know, I was going to be cool. Okay. But I was just too uh, today to even change it. I was going to put, um, There's I was going to put Lady Paranormal and then uh, the abbreviation for Unprofessional Associate Producer. And I was like, oh my God, that spells out UAP. That explains why I'm weird. There you go. <laughs> you should, yeah. well, I mean, is it too late to call him? Like after the show? Who, Chris? No. No, I could. Well, he sent me a message back, and he said that he stays up late doing his sketches and stuff like that. So, and you said Chris Milner. Miller, I think it's Miller. Let me look at my because I see yeah, a Chris is, Milner, Milner in there. Chris Milner in here is it? No, no this is Chris. Name? No, this is Chris Miller. Miller. Oh. Two L's. Not, sorry, Chris Milner. Happy to see you though. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah, and go ahead and become a member. Dollar ninety nine a month. You and two, Kevin Bode. I see y'all. One Studios. We're gonna have him on our show too. Sure, oh, no. that's uh, Jake. Yeah. What's yeah, up, Jake? How you doing, buddy? He's coming All in, right? Eh? Let's pay these bills. 
pay these bills because tonight I have nothing. I have no issues at all tonight. Good deal. Good deal. Everybody, so that you know, the Super Chats are open. Y'all have been showing up and showing out lately. Don't let it in tonight if you can. We would appreciate it. The uh, help with the Super Stickers. Uh, in all serious now, guys, you, you guys have, have been amazing with that helping us out, and we appreciate that so very much. We are on track to uh, to do it again this month. We explained to you how YouTube works. You have to hit a hundred dollars before they pay you, and they only pay once a month. So, if you hit ninety nine dollars for the month, you don't get anything until you hit a hundred. So it'll take you another month. So you guys have helped us to to hit that hundred dollar mark each of the last two months. So let's not stop this month. All right. If you're new to the show, guys that we just mentioned, please hit that subscribe button before you leave. We uh, are very happy to see you. We hope that you stick around. If, if you don't become a member, that's all. That's all right. I don't care. I was just messing with you. But uh, thank you for showing up. And please hit that subscribe button. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Help us to continue to grow. And if you would like to be on the show with Wayne and I, reach out to him, Wayne at ParanormalWorldProductions.com or myself, Tiffany at ParanormalWorldProductions.com. We are currently booking for June all of our Saturdays are completely filled, and I think we have four Tuesdays left. So reach out to us. I want to ask everybody to head over to ParanormalWorldProductions.com. Check out our website, all of the other shows under the studio's umbrella. Show them some love as well. Pick you up some merch. I'm still waiting to see some folks, some pictures of some folks in a Paranormal Odyssey t-shirt. So we hadn't, hadn't seen that, so... Head over there and pick you up some merch at ParanormalWorldProductions.com. And if you have any questions for tonight's guest, which I am sure that you will, just put them in all capital letters. We'll grab them up and put them in our highlighted area for the end of the show. Just put them in all capital letters so we don't miss them. If we do happen to miss them, resend them and we'll, we'll grab them. All right, and uh, real quick, Tef Tiffany, while I do something, you tell them about the membership. Awesome. So we have our members-only giveaway that we are currently reaching for. You will be getting a copy of my book, a signed autographed copy of my book, The Unfamiliars, a signed copy of Miss Naomi Finn, who is in the chat, her book. You will get a Yeti lunchbox and your merch, and that comes in many different colors, you can have any size, any color you want. You just have to let us know. The membership is only $1.99 a month. And we have really, really cool members only hangouts. We have a Discord now. We're still working on the movie nights. Um, it's just a, a really, we really want to be able to get to know you guys personally. And this is one way that we can. So yeah, the Discord is doing exactly that I, I don't get to be on there as much as a lot of the people that i see on there but i do enjoy getting on there and hanging out with our peeps uh there's it's like seven or eight of us that that are on there pretty regular you know we do voice chats uh where we just get on there and look at each other's face and actually talk other than just typing so uh it's it's pretty cool it's fun so uh i hope that you will consider doing that like you said it's just a dollar 99 a month all right, before we get to our guest, the Vogel Brothers, I want to make just one real quick announcement. I uh, announced it on Facebook, but I will announce it here as well. I have added another speaking gig to the schedule this year. I will be speaking along with our good buddy, Mr. Brian, at the third annual Ozark Mountain Bigfoot Conference. So I am really, really excited and looking forward to that. Um, uh, the month after that, I'll be speaking in Ohio. So I've got two speaking events this year. I've never done one before this year, and now I have two lined up. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyone in that area, I hope that you can make it out and say hello. Yeah, congratulations on that, buddy. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is September the 28th. And she's also doing a camp out uh, after the conference. I think the conference is on a Saturday and me and Brian are going to head up there and camp till I think Monday, Monday or Tuesday. And then we're going to head home. So if you're in that area, we would love to see you. Yep. That's really cool. All right. You got anything else, ma'am? No, sir. I'm good to go. I am too. I believe the guys that are hanging out backstage are as well. As we said, we got the Bogle brothers hanging out back there. I'm really excited to have these guys. I, I've been seeing seeing them in a few places on Facebook. They've got a Facebook page. We invite you guys to go and check out. They're up in the Massachusetts area. We were talking to them for a few minutes before we brought them on. It seemed like a couple of really cool guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get them out here. And there we are. What's going on, fellas? How you doing? <laughs> thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it is definitely our pleasure. And uh, I'm telling you guys, as we always do with everyone, we ask, first question we ask is how you got your start in uh, this crazy world of Bigfoot. And you, uh, yeah. you guys, y'all is pretty interesting. So, uh, if you don't mind, let us have it. Sure. <laughs> uh, it was 1976, and in November of that year, we went down to the movie. We hiked across town and went into a little town of Agawam to see a movie called Sasquatch, The Legend of Bigfoot, and, uh, and then hiked back home. And that was the, you know, we never knew about Bigfoot, never knew, you know, it was just something extremely different uh on the east coast we never really heard of it so it was just different we didn't know anything about it so we had an opportunity to go check it out so we did um maybe a month or two later uh they had all of a sudden you know it's it's winter it's december going into january and all of a sudden you wake up one morning we're going outside to play and there's these giant foot tracks through our backyard and all the way down through the river across the ice the canal I mean, the thing went a, a number of miles, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, so we have these giant footprints that we've already been, you know, running around checking out because <laughs> we're nosy little kids, you know, 13, 14. And, and that's what we were doing. And it turns out uh, someone had reported it in the town of Agawam first, and they saw these tracks. So the police are showing up, the, uh, the news people. Uh, all the different TV places are showing up and what. They so, had no clue what they what, what to do or what they were looking at. Yeah. Yeah. They had never seen Bigfoot tracks before. So they, you know, they were always surmising this is the thing that was, you know, just coming out to pass. And we right. just saw the movie. It was just really coming around. No one really talked about Bigfoot. I mean, this is 76. Bob Gimlin was right. showing up in 67. So there's not a big time to get it over here. <laughs> You know, there wasn't a lot. It just wasn't a thing, it's a real, you know, so it wasn't a, it just wasn't a thing. But there were quite a few people came and investigated for, for this thing. Like you said, state police, FBI, everybody was here. Yeah, we had a big, uh, you know, investigators like ourselves. They showed up. Uh, they were actually called in and, and asked to track and, and do it, you know, whatever they could do to find or see or whatever and find whatever made these tracks. And so we were the, you know, it was kind of our backyard where everybody, the, all the media and everything kind of huddled up and centered around. We had this big property off the side that it was a big clear space and you can get, you could get in there and park vehicles and whatnot. So that's exactly what they did. And then we started walking them down through the woods and uh, basically through, through a ravine. Yeah. Following you know, the tracks. Down along, down along a stream, down in, across the tracks to the river you know just like her yeah. just like you would have thought a bigfoot would walk yeah this guy was just walking so they, they they really did their diligence i'll tell you yeah so it turns out uh these this, this thing here walked across the river um i walked pretty far for a pretty long time so it was believable right. at that point you know no one was really thinking anything but bigfoot this was a bigfoot yeah and, and, and they didn't got to wrap their head around it but the prints were what 23 inches 
They're 20, about 20, 70, 20, maybe. 26, somewhere in there. Yeah, they were big. Wow. And we had 18 inches of snow. So, yeah, it was a lot of snow. <laughs> so this guy basically snowshoed around with Bigfoot tracks. Uh, it yeah. turned out to be this guy was playing a hoax on the neighborhood kids. And uh, he got carried away and it just started, you yeah. know, it just took off. Somebody had spotted the tracks and it, yeah. and it, it went in a different direction than what he was thinking. And yeah. all of a sudden it blew up. So he didn't say anything because he was kind of kind of freaking out, didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, they figured it out about a year or two later. Yeah. Well, the kid, yeah. the kid ended up turning himself in. You know, it was Absolutely. just a, it was a, it was a hoax, but it was it wasn't a hoax on Bigfooting. It was he was doing it to the neighborhood kids. Yeah. So that you know, yeah. it it was a harmful thing. Yeah. So or not harmful, I should say. I've been doing this, talking to people since 2020, and this is the first time I have ever interviewed anyone that got their start Bigfooting from a hoax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it no. certainly planted the seed. I'll tell you that, you know, because that went right into, you know, in search of and all the different, you know, all the different, you know, seek them out and find them shows and all that stuff. So it, we just went through that whole era of watching all that. And yeah, one yeah. thing led to another. And pretty, well, here you go. It, it, you're right, though. It's, it's a heck of a way to get started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it got you interested, though. But as you guys were telling us, you know, that happens in 76 and then life takes over, you know, you get busy. I'm sure you had careers, you had work, family and stuff takes over. And then you guys start getting back into it about exactly. 2012, you said, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, 2013. So us, okay. So start us off right there. What happened and, and what have you guys been getting into since? Um, we had a business called Tacoma Mountain Outdoors. It was an adventure education business. Yep. And we used to do a lot of guiding, uh, rock climbing, canoeing, kayaking, all that stuff. It was an outdoor education, adventure education, certification programs, all that stuff. So we were high adventure. Um, and that's what we did for almost 20 years. And we were on a trip uh, one summer. We were just real busy. We were paddling up in the Adirondacks, and we were with scout groups. We were with this group. We were with that group. We just paddled the whole summer up in the Adirondacks and, and uh, decided we were going to go on vacation uh, and go up there into the Adirondacks in, uh, what was it, Sep September, yeah. uh, late September. We went up because no one was – we figured yeah. all the schools went back. All the kids are back in school everybody's off vacation so we're going to have the place to ourselves. yeah midweek because you know mid we've been up there all summer dealing with all these different groups and everything else coming through yeah so we, we went up there and it was we were pretty much by ourselves. yeah paddle and portage you know lake to lake you know paddling and portaging and, and we get to this spot yeah yeah so we we get to this spot uh and like i said it's paddle and portage you, there is no quick way in and quick way out you know you're yeah. you're gone for a couple of days and it's going to take you a couple of days to get back to your car it's just that simple and so we're out at this this little remote place uh there's one campsite on it and in the adirondacks you have to stay at a a dcr or a a, a conservation bdc uh yeah a, a state campground it's a state approved campground on the maps up there they have a little campsite you could stay here if you don't stay there, they'll actually physically move you out and kick you out of the park and say, see ya. Um, so uh, most folks don't mess around, you know. So we knew there was one spot designated to be in this one area. And we weren't bigfooting. We were going fishing and we were just going yeah. for isolation it was vacation. and being quiet. That's what we were looking for. Yes. Yeah, it's vacation. Yeah, because we weren't even thinking bigfoot. No, I didn't, we didn't even think about bigfoot. That wasn't even a thing. No, no. So, so we we get there, we pack up, and we uh we get to our destination. We set up our campsite, get all all the fixings ready for a fire that night. So we all we have to do is come back and cook our fish. We're gonna go cook a meal. We're gonna go catch fish for dinner, which was pretty good all day. Um, and that's why we decided, to, you know, when we made camp to come back, we'll get the fire, you know, kind of ready to go. And then we'll go fishing and we'll come back for dinner. And that's that's when it started. 
uh, we went and we were just doing that. We went and made, uh, or rather, we got our fishing gear. Yeah. I, I didn't even own a cell phone in 2013. I had a camera, maybe, and that was in the pack because I didn't want it to get wet. I didn't really care about a fishing shot because I was going fishing for dinner. You know, it was going down the hatch. I wasn't a trophy, you know, so I wasn't worried about it. And we weren't planning on staying long, right? No. I mean, it was in and out, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. We just a, we were just going from one campsite to the next. Yeah, and this is where we just kind of stopped over, to you know, for the night. So we we get there, we're fishing, and uh, it was a great day of fishing. I'll tell you. Yeah, it he paddled, a, I fished, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more like a fishing story at this point. We're no longer uh, fishing for dinner. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, it, it was really good. Every cast was a fish, you know, it became like that. So it was an awesome day on the, on the lake. Uh, and we came to a pond or a stream that came into the pond, a little confluence. And we went up this stream, figured maybe the fishing will be good up there. Or maybe, you know, we had been catching um, bass, little three, four pound smallies. And they just, they just dance up, they, you know, break water and they're flying, flapping around on a fly rod. Yep. A five-way fly rod, so it's a lot of fun. And um, all of a sudden, we go up this stream, and it's a braided stream. And we get to the, um, we we get up to a point where it's kind of we don't know where the heck the stream is anymore. It's kind of all in front of us, but there's so much braids. It's coming from you know many, many, many choices in front of us. So finally, we pick a choice, and we we start paddling up and. We come to where everything comes together, and it comes out at a beaver a beaver pond, uh, which is a beaver dam now. So we're we're paddled up to the bottom edge, looking head level into a beaver pond. Um, you know, so it's probably four feet. We're sitting in a canoe, yeah, at least. and and the beaver pond is up here somewhere, and and so we're, yeah, you know, we're fishing up to that point, and um, and we started fishing into the actual beaver pond right and um that's yes. that's when that's when he yeah. asked he caught something for the yeah. first first or second time all day yeah and all hell broke loose yeah. <laughs> and i mean it went crazy yeah uh, all of a sudden to our left these two trees started shaking and i mean shaking like we call it a snow globe because that's yeah. the way it looked like and uh and and these are big trees. And then we're just kind of looking at each other. So we started to back out, and this thing started screaming, yelling, howling, whatever you want to call it. Roaring. Yeah, I mean, you just couldn't make up the sound. You know, it was just that and it was that loud, that intense. Yeah. Those you two were trees were shaking fish. like they were in a snow globe. What's that? I said, Y'all were catching his fish. <laughs> he was it, mad. Yeah, well, that's what we kind yeah. of figured after we had a chance to actually yeah. think about it. Yeah, so this thing, <laughs> this thing, um, these these two trees are 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 shaking like they're in a snow globe. The only two trees in the whole woods that are shaking. It's you know, it's a nice day. There's no wind or nothing. It's and yeah. this thing is roaring, and the shaking and the roaring goes on for 10, 15 minutes. Didn't yes. you know? It was just all of a sudden. This intense roaring, uh, I guess, and it was very, 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 very loud. Um, I, I tell people it was uh, it was like being at a Ted Nugent concert, and if you've been blessed to be at a Ted Nugent concert, the, <laughs> the rhythm and the reverb just kind of just blows right through your body. You could feel it. You can just bounce feel the off. sound, and um, so the sound that we were feeling was the same sounds that it was projecting. So it wasn't like it was just, I don't know, like a monotone sound or or a monotone feel. You just felt this vibration. Yeah. It went with the, the the yelling. You could feel the intensity of oh, yeah. the yell via the loudness and, and what you could feel. And that's why we were paddling whatever, backwards. Whatever it was did not want us there. They, they were ticked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we paddled back through the braided area, got out in the lake. This thing was so aggressive, or things were so aggressive, we thought they were potentially coming out. Because it, like I said, this went on 10 minutes. And you could still feel 
the uh, oh, yeah. the reverb you, against you against your body at least 70, 70 yards, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so y'all were y'all were that? hearing y'all were hearing and feeling it, but were you able to see anything? No, no. never saw it. Never, ever, ever saw it. No, if you've ever been to New York, you know yeah. you can't see three feet in. It, it's a boreal <laughs> forest. It's a real thick spruce pine yeah. forest. It's a short, dark. Uh, you know, it gets dark at four o'clock in the summer. Yeah, yeah you know, you're you not gonna, headlamp. You're not going to be out there prank, uh, pranking anybody. Be, I mean, it's it just oh, it's thick. Yeah, it's just it's, too thick. Nah. Mm -hmm. And and you're out in the middle of nowhere. And besides that, <laughs> the the noise that we I've never ever ever heard a noise like this. No, ever. Uh, I so I, I I don't know what to tell you. It was, uh, but I could tell you a whole bunch of different things. It's not. <laughs> Or it wasn't, you know. It certainly, you know, well, you know. We went. In back. fact, we sat out there in the water, kind of talking. Oh, like, what the hell is twenty this minutes? And, and we came to the conclusion that maybe it was a bear and a couple of mountain lions beating each other up. That's where it's and they're jumping in the trees and stuff. I don't. I, there that's was no. That's, yeah, because we couldn't figure it out ourselves. Yeah. yeah. But the well, trees were. Yeah. What's that? I said you probably wouldn't want to see it with as loud and you know <laughs> all of that. Could you? I mean, back, you're right. Back right. then, I don't think we did want to see it, and it it went on for a good that would that'd really be 15 good. minutes, 10, 10, 15 minutes, and then it just stopped. When we got to the other side of the lake, it just kind of stopped. Yep, we backed out far enough away right. from the fishing hole. So we yep. so we were just sitting there, we're thinking about it, talking about it. So then we just started paddling back up the lake, yeah. headed back to our campsite, and we get halfway there, and I, I'm in the front, and I says, hey, you know what? And he goes, yeah, I know. We're camping on this exact same side that all of this just took place about 100 yards away. <laughs> yeah, no, it was maybe a couple hundred. It wasn't that it wasn't far, far. I'll tell you. Less than a quarter crazy. mile. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, yeah, it was nuts. yeah, it was, it was very... It was a nice thing to get any sleep. <laughs> yeah, because we away. didn't know what the heck it was. You know, we just, we figured it was a bear and a mountain lion. A Bigfoot still hadn't crossed our mind. No, really. No. It really hadn't. Um, we, we actually went back the following year. And we, we, yeah, we just to investigate it for ourselves. Yeah. And those trees, after we bushwhacked our way through there, those trees were about eight inches in diameter and at least seven to eight feet apart from each other. Yep. Ooh. And that was crazy because they were both shaking like, yeah, you know, it was nothing. Like Maybe they were in a snowglobe. Yep. Just that surreal. Just, just crazy yeah, was, shaking. Crazy. That's what was going on. And, and stuff was coming out of the trees into the water and stuff like right. that. And yeah, I don't know if I can say that they were throwing things or this was just pieces of the tree right. falling off and being projected in from but the shaking. But either way, we weren't sticking around. You know, no, not at that point. That was that was pretty freaky. That's and then to have to spend the night there, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's nowhere to go. You're not getting to your car. There right. you are, a couple hundred feet from where it just happened, you know. It's like, yikes. So that night we had, uh, I don't even think we ate. No, <laughs> and the whole thing started sure. with dinner, you know. I don't even think we ate. And we probably munched out and made coffee, <laughs> hot cocoa or something. And uh, and that was it. We kind of just stayed up till you got exhausted and fell asleep. Pretty uneventful. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. And, uh, no, no. We had, I think we had a no, deer came God. in, or that <laughs> that that was about it. But nothing really, nothing. And you know, at this point, we still weren't thinking Bigfoot. No. But when we got back, yeah. You know, we in uh, fact we told the ranger about it. Right. We told the ranger on our way back. Yeah, uh, we. Did. we we we're getting out of the lake and putting our canoe up on the boat. Ranger was coming in and we were telling him, Hey, I don't know what's going on out there, but this thing was, I was something was yelling and screaming and we told him what happened. And, and he just kind of shrugged it off and off he went. Off he, went. he didn't say a word, you know, kind of, yeah, okay, thanks. And that was it. And off he went. So maybe he went and checked it out. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But pretty wild. But that's, that's what happened. You know, that's kind of what really yeah. put us over the edge enough to well, where that, we started looking around and Facebook right. and that's, stuff yeah, like we that. Started, we started investigating it for ourselves. Yeah. 
just to just to try to figure it out because it was just that crazy. Yep, and then we're finding other people with similar stories right. or similar similar in, uh, activities, things that are you know Bigfoot type related with the knocks, the whistles, the whoops, and the th you know all that yeah. stuff. You know, we we thought we were kind of like what the heck, <laughs> and then come to find out after you know we're, we're starting you know going through this Facebook world back in 2013 that all these other people are are out there doing it. So it became a really cool vehicle for us well, to yeah. figure out what potentially what happened to us out there. Um, and then it kept moving us forward. So we kept having more experiences. We, we, but like we were, we talked about it. We think there were a couple of them. Yeah. And they were fishing that beaver dam. Yeah. Monday morning quarterback. You know, if, if you've ever seen their, yeah. their, their hands, they're like, they're like mitts. Uh, they're, you know, they're huge. Yeah, like first baseman gloves. They're yeah, they're gloves. just massive. So you know, if you've got a couple, if you've got a couple of bigfoots up there, adult bigfoots with those hands, those things are some big nets, and they're just pushing fish yeah. to the shoreline. You know, yeah. And this, then here we are throwing the fishing line over and catching fish. Yeah, they yeah, they they weren't too happy. They <laughs> they had enough after we started. That fish started dancing on top. They had yeah. enough. They started yelling and shaking and said, "That's it. We're done." Yeah, we're out of here. They didn't Next. care if we did it out out in the out in the lake, but once yeah. we hit that pond, yeah, that was off, and, off and limits. You know, looking back at the shape of the uh, the beaver pond and the beaver dam, it was a small narrow stream. It wasn't more than probably four or five feet wide, three to five feet wide at any given spot. Little narrow stream, uh, kind of deep banks, kind of cut into the shore. You know, into the uh, deep banks. Let's put it that way. And it was probably knee deep. Uh, it was perfect. Maybe thigh yeah, deep in pools, um, and if these things have these big hands, these you know these giant mitts, yeah, and you got two Bigfoot walking from one end down towards the beaver pond, a natural fish trap, yeah, it's and it's working. using its hands pushing, you know, and it gets down to this natural fish trap. Potentially, yeah. they're going to grab a fish, you know. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm almost humanizing my I, what I might try. But I mean, they 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 it, do with other animals fish, so this right. could be a potential. Right, it's still thing. still an animal. It's still fishing. Yeah. They're yep. just using their hands, like it, bears use their yeah. paws and use their mouth. It's so remote that it just didn't. Right, you know why? Why were we there? We were fishing, and it was an outstanding spot. Yeah. Uh, why were they there? Well, they were probably <laughs> fishing because it was an outstanding spot. Yep. Simple. And, and it was quiet. There was nobody yep. back there. Yep. And that's why we went specifically to that to that pond or to that lake. Because yep. there was nobody. We knew nobody was going to be there. It was just so far out. Yeah. Okay. And so they, they figured the same thing. So moving on from that point, you know, that get your interest going. You you come to a realization, you know, we might be dealing with the Bigfoot. So you start your research. Have you guys had any sightings since yeah, you started your research? Yes, we have. Yeah. Okay, let's hear, yes, about, hear about some of those. Uh, what about the first one, the, the, your very first sighting? Right there. 2018. Show them the cats. The, uh, oh, see if you can see that. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see the heel, heel straight. It's oh, kind of hard to set it up underneath the arm. Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. See it. You can you see the heel in here. Oh, Follow yeah. the foot. Yeah. Toes are coming up this way. Yeah. I see the toes. That's heel, the heel strike. Oh wow. That's the heel. That that print is seventeen and a half, seventeen and a half by eight, that eight and a half. Here. All the way up. And it's about three, three and a half inches deep. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. You know, you don't get that picture perfect but hey you know what the context of the story the two eyewitness and the tracks that we took this, this whole sometimes this, a duck is a duck <laughs> this whole thing started on a, a bfro expedition yeah and there was uh there's about 12 of us and it's been raining on and off for about four days so uh now where were y'all still were y'all in new york still or is this no, massachusetts we were in we're in Mass, Western Mass. Western Mass. We were uh, in Russell, okay. Mass. Actually, that's where the expedition was. It was here at our. Home. <clears throat> and then from there, yeah. so we uh, we went out to Savoy on Sunday. 
or Saturday night, Sunday. And uh, it, it was still kind of a misty rain. And there were about six, seven cars. So we get out there, and the first spot that we stopped at was, it, it, it was raining kind of hard. No one wanted to get out. <laughs> so we, um, we turned around, and we drove off to another spot. We were, you know, because there's only a couple of places to go up here. So we uh, we went up to the second spot called Balance Rock, and we uh, we we pulled over. Uh, most of us got out. There were a few people that stayed behind, which was okay. So just about 12 of us, I'd say, that we're walking in, and we we get about a quarter of the way, and we get across the stream, and these two guys fall behind. They like they like to watch the group to see if the group is being watched. And his father and son went up in front and we, they had a GoPro to see if they could catch anything before the group got up there. So we meand we meandered all the way up to this place to uh, the Balance Rock. It's about I don't know, three quarters of a mile in, mile in. And um, we got up to the rock and we're standing there. And we asked, we asked if anybody wanted to make a Bigfoot call. And this young boy says, sure, I'd like to. So he gave out a little whoop. And all of a sudden, the two guys that were behind us came up and they said, hey, we've got whistles back here. He no sooner said that the guy in front sent his son back. And he says, we're getting claps or knocks up here. So 12 of us kind of walk into the woods and we kind of spread out. Now, the woods are really quiet because it's been raining for four days, and it's still kind of misty rain. But we get in there, and we're kind of spread out like a 90. And I'm standing on this on this little knoll, this little rock knoll, and I've got an orange rain jacket. And I, I stuck out like, like a sore thumb because everybody else was in a dark color. But we're standing there. We're all listening. We're all looking around. And... uh I said, geez, if I see something, you know, I'm going to squat down and see if I can see anything moving. So I bent down and I'm looking around and, you know, being a hunter, I said, maybe I'll see something move. And I didn't see anything. And so I kind of stood up and I was just standing there for a minute. And I, and I, I also, I saw this black object and I kind of leaned like I was trying to look around something so I could get a better view. And I said, what is that? And when I stood up, it stood up. It teeter-tottered with me. And as soon as it did that, I, I pointed at it and I started running at it. Well, unbeknownst to me, the guy to my right was on a, on a different angle than me. And we couldn't see each other. But the guy in the middle had the GoPro. And it shows us coming in at two different angles into the exact same frame pointing at the same object. Unfortunately, he's standing behind the tree, so he can't get the picture. All he got what was the was the tree there. So everybody else came up behind us and they uh and they said, Oh, who did anybody see it? And John to my right says, Yeah, he says, I saw the bottom half. There was a tree laying down. And he saw the bottom half move. And I says, I teeter tottered with it. I said I saw it from the waist up. I said, it, I said, it was just this big black sheet of plywood standing there. And, you know, we're looking around for print. We didn't see anything. So I says, oh, my God. I said, I can't believe this. So we, we kind of, we, we, you know, we spent a good half hour there trying to see what was going on, and see any evidence and all this other stuff. At this, this whole day. Usually Tim and I are together. We're always Bigfooting, doing something. Well, he had to teach a fishing class. So when I got back to the to the camp, I says, I said, you have to come out with me. I says, I gotta show you what just happened to me. So we 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 turn around and we drive back out there. Yep. And I says, I've got my range finder, we've got a tape measure, the whole nine yards. I I took I Told him the whole story. I, I walk him out to the to the rock where I was standing. I walk. I had him walk out to where I saw this thing. I had him stop and, and I range finded it out to about forty yards. 
So then he took his, he took the ruler and took his hat and started going up. And I just kept telling him, go up, go up. And he, I stopped and it stopped at almost nine feet. It was like a sheet of plywood that I was looking at. It was that, it was that wide. Mm -hmm. And it was just gone. It was just there and gone. So we turned around and we're walking. He's walking down along the tree that's laying down. And he goes, oh my, look at this. It's right here. And that print was, it was perfect. It was right there. <laughs> and we, we have another print that is seven feet away from this one. And it's the ball of, of the, the toes. And that's where it took its second step. And it, it sunk in three inches, three and a half inches. And yeah. the toes went across the root, scraped the bark off of the root up here. That's the heel strike. So there is two prints. One is just a half a print, but they were seven feet apart. So and it's an inch deep. Inch we didn't deep. have we didn't have anything. We had nothing. We had no no, uh, no casting material. Casting material, nothing. So I I called my buddy and I says, hey, he's on his way down the highway to a game. And uh, I said, you got to, I said, you got to come back. I says, I says, you got to bring your casting material. He goes, why? And I says, we have a print here that is unbelievable. He goes, no, you don't. I says, I'm telling you, we're not lying to you. It's right here. Two of them. So he says, if I have to come all the way back there, I'll kill you. So <laughs> I said, come on back, man. I'm telling you, this is true. So he comes back. We, we drive out. And we meet him at, at the beginning of the dirt road. <clears throat> we get in the truck and we start to drive in. We didn't get in that road 50, 60 yards. Nope. And there was a screen that came off the top of the mountain to the right. That if that wasn't a warning screen, I don't know what wasn't. I mean, it was it was super loud. So very <laughs> similar to New York. Yeah. You know, yeah. there was a roar scream. It wasn't yeah they were they were letting whatever whatever was out there to know that we were coming back in again yeah and again the loudness the, yeah. the tone the whole thing from the distance it was doing it as well pretty far up it, yeah it was it was up on top of the mount and it was letting us know you know hey the, and uh, we just we or just it was letting something up. else know that that we were there right but it was extremely <laughs> loud roaring at that point it was but we got in there. We yeah. drove in. We we hiked on out, and we got there. We he was like, "Wow, can't believe that!" And while we were casting that big cat, the the big print, that's when we noticed that there was a that second shorter print, print, a second print, seven feet away. Yeah, and we took that primarily just to show the heel depth. Right, the heel depth was the same as the toe push off. Or the ball of the foot push off, meaning the same weight made the same mark. Yeah, seven same, feet away. Whatever it was, That's same it. creature made the same the same print. So here you got a heel strike landing on his heel, and the, and the other foot he was on the ball of his foot pushing yeah. off. It was no heel strike. It was the ball of yeah, the foot. It was the ball of the foot with a, a deep impression with a push off. So we got you know three inch push off is what it is. Of course, it's really, it, it, it's, it, it the print is perfect because it matches the depth of the other print. Yeah. And you can see it; it's consistent. So it really was a it was a good a good find. Yeah. But out yeah. of twelve people, two of us saw. It. Yeah. And two tracks. And we have two tracks. Yeah. A number of them had seen or heard knocks, and they heard the knocks. They heard like that. I believe personally, I believe that there were three, and we caught the one in the middle. That's why there were whistles behind us and knocks in front of us. And I believe that there were three of them, and we caught the one in the middle, and he didn't know what to do. Yeah. Or it didn't know what to do. And uh, then when it got you, spotted, yeah. what's Let me that? Ask you this, guys. Um, and I, I've been struggling with this because I don't know if if members of the Yeah. Uh -oh. He froze. Well, we lost him. I he think froze. we did. Community, find the word woo. Oh, I, oh there, there he is. Yeah, you're there now. Okay. What is it? 44. I'm going to mark this down so I can edit it out. Okay. okay so uh, my question is 
we all know what the term woo means. Some sure. people, I don't know if they find it offensive or not. I'm trying to figure out if you guys are more biological or do you believe in the high strangeness side of Bigfoot? What, what are your beliefs? Well, personally, personally I, I want to say it's flesh and blood because yeah. that's hard enough to wrap my head around. Right. Yeah. But we've had experience. We've had the woo with, with this with orbs before the day before I saw that my Bigfoot, myself and another gentleman and his son were in a field. It was about one o'clock in the morning. And there was this orange glowing ball in the air, maybe 200 yards away, just sitting there. And I know there's nothing there. It's just an open field. Yeah. And he kind of looked at me and I looked at him. We looked back at this thing. It was there for a good 15 seconds. And it just gone. Yeah. yeah. We're, the like, same way. we're like, what I'm was that? Good. I'm the exact same way, guys. When I started, uh, I was it was a biological creature. It, it was just this is just a, a North American primate that we just hadn't caught up with yet. But the more people I talk to, like you guys, like y'all just said, with the yeah. orbs, with all these well, other strange know, things that are happening, I I, I, saw, I still believe that it's it's still it's still flesh and blood, but somehow or another, it can, made that track. it can turn around and go from one. One thing to an egg, you know, it can just like step into a, a different dimension. It's a hard thing to wrap your head around, you know, but but you know, it's not the first time we've had it happen to us twice. <laughs> the orbs, yeah, yeah, and, and both, we, and we hear, <laughs> yeah, we hear right more. The, uh, I'm sorry, it's okay. I was just gonna say that we hear more and more and more of those encounters. With yeah, the orbs and the Bigfoot or UFOs, and then the Bigfoot. Yeah, I don't know why the two go together or if they go together. I can tell you what happened to us, and we have and multiple, twelve other people, multiple witnesses. <laughs> each time it's ever happened. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's it's not something you know that we're fabricating because we've got a dozen people to say, oh, yeah, yeah, dude, I saw that. You know, and it's just mind blowing that we actually saw that after we witnessed a potential Bigfoot. You know, so it, it did happen. Uh, you know, I, I didn't witness that Bigfoot. Eric and another guy did, John. And and that was it. There was a number of um, lesser experiences with the knocks and the whoops and the yep. whistles. Uh, that that kind of a, I say, lesser experience. It's just it wasn't a visual, but it was an experience. Yeah. Two out of 12, though. Two out of 12 people saw it. So that was yeah. a good thing. Yeah. And... Yeah. And now we come out and have the prints on yeah, top this, of it. Yeah, this thing is nine feet tall, I mean, as, as wide as the sheet, you know, four feet wide. And we have the tracks to, you know, at least to go with it uh, for a short period of time. Right. So there's a physical, you know, there's a physical document right here yeah. that says this thing was running around and left, left it in the woods. You know, it right. might, it's not picture perfect, but it, it's there. Yeah. 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 It's just the way it goes. You know, it, it was the way it is. Unfortunately, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. But that um, was quite the that, that was quite an encounter. Before we get into the questions, guys, do, do y'all have another uh sighting encounter that you can hit us with really quick? Down here at the uh October Mountain State Forest, we had a uh another woo thing. Uh it was a BFRO uh outing. It was here at our camp and it was in 2018. Oh, 16, 18, 18 in September. Uh, this is the track that was cast. You can see the toes that kind of are, uh, you yeah, know, one, two, yeah. three. You can see them up in here, wherever the heck. That's a, <laughs> it's a tough way to look at it. It but, is. Yeah. You can see the heel. Where am I? You can see the yeah. heel, the toes. It's all there. Uh, you can see the, the actual toes Turn right there. You see the foot. And then, you know, it's. It's there, seventeen and a half inches. That was um, that was the best print out of six. Out of six, that was a pretty good cast. And and the reason why it looks like that was because there was a a, a dirt incline. Yeah, it was going up a hill. And then that's, the, that's and the toes that were were kind of you know tweaked on the side. So what it's showing is flexation in the foot. It that's what it is. That's yeah. that's as simple as that. 
So this is a BFRO expedition. It's 2018. It's September. Um, we typically go. We believe we we talk about patterns and things like that. This was one of our pattern spots. It was one of our areas that we thought we would have a result in. Because uh, you're on a BFRO expedition, people are actually giving you money to go and have a potential Bigfoot experience yeah. or an encounter. You know, we can only hope nine out of 10 times, nine out of nine times, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 almost, there's nothing that happens. And when it does, it's like, whoa, right. yeah. to have that many witnesses, it's even better, you know, because it's just easier to corroborate a story. But again, it was raining or it was a misty rain. Yeah. Just like the other time. Yeah. We're up at uh, uh, Felton Pond at Felton Pond in October Mountain State Forest. This has been an area where Eric and I have been investigating for years and years and years and years, um, doing numbers of reports up in there. And uh, with another group we were active with, the Squatchachusetts group, we would do a lot of, it's kind of a local thing. So we would go up in there and uh, take people out and whatnot and, and go squatching basically up in October Mountain State Forest. So we thought we had a good opportunity. The timing was right. All this stuff. So here we are. We go off. It's uh, by, I don't know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And it's still drizzly rain. And we all have these TK Scout little handheld mono uh, monocular kind of a uh, flare. flare. And there's some other people with some other types of flares and whatnot that they have. And there's another, there's a dozen, maybe 14 people on this, yep. it was standing all together in this we're, one area. We're on one side of, uh, of this dam. You know, we're, you're on yeah, a lake you're on a pond and there's small, a dam. Small lake, yeah. And we're on the other side. We're on, we're on the, the, the picnic side, I, I guess you call it. Yeah. And, and there were six guys up in the front. Tim was one of them. And they're looking at it. They're watching this thing walk back and forth. Somebody had saw something on the other side. So it caught everybody's attention. So we all, with the flares, start looking. So they're watching it. And it walks up. Then it turns around and comes back. Then it turns around and walks up again. And it's coming back. Well, while this is happening, a friend of ours turns around and says, uh, he says, come here for a minute. So we kind of walk over to him. And he goes, do you smell anything? And he, no sooner did he say that, and I had a, uh, a scent or a smell of musk. It was very strong. And then the people that were behind us, they they turned around and they go, "What is that?" You know. And they thought it was a. They said it smelled like wet dog or whatever. But we we actually got a smell. And then while this was still happening, uh, I yelled over and said, "Did anybody take a picture?" And that's when they said, "Oh!" And they clicked on the uh, yeah uh, the record button. And then we got it going out on its last walk. We called it the pacing Bigfoot because it turns out this thing would come out, you know, 10 feet and then go back, go 15, 20 feet, go back 30 feet. So, and, and then, and then it just disappeared off. It just disappeared. That was it. It was gone. Uh, moments later at the edge of where it walked off, we're in the direction of, we're watching it with a flare. It disappears into the woods. It, it walked into the woods. You could see yeah. this thing walking. Can the only get, you can only get 100 yards out of the flares. And it's raining, so you're not going to get in. Anyway, less. The, the, it turned out the, the pixelization was crap, and the, there was no good video. Didn't matter. It yeah, just yeah, didn't even matter. Though, even though we all watched it, it there was still, it was yeah. just a, a blob. So you're watching it through the flare. You can see it. You can, you can see everything happening. And then this thing disappears into the woods. Now, there's at least... Now, by now, a dozen people have seen it through the flares. Everybody smells this thing. Yep. And then when it, it when it disappears, the smell is gone as well. All of a sudden, uh, what's well, quieted down, we're all talking about what we're seeing or what we saw. Uh, the smell, everything was kind of, that was the first time we'd ever associated a smell with a Bigfoot. So that was exciting in its own right, but, or a potential smell with a Bigfoot. There's other potential reasons why it, it could have been smelly, but I mean, they're, we're watching this thing pace back and forth. Uh, so anyways, down the road or, or down the, the trail where this thing disappears, there's a pine, uh, there's a peninsula at this, this lake or the pond. And at the end of the pond or at the end of this peninsula is a pine tree and it's 120 feet tall for hot house. 
And all of a sudden, this bright blue light orb, for lack of better words, it was an orb. Uh, and it was as it was, it was like a crystal blue, uh, non-metallic, just a crystal blue light that really wasn't emitting light. It, there was no light coming off of it. It was just a round ball in a dark world. That was it. A round blue ball in a all dark the lights, world. Uh, all the light staying inside. It's not, it's not you, coming out. There was no cool. shadows from the tree limbs. or no. Nope. This looked like it. Looked, not, not at one in the morning. <laughs> it looked like it popped down in the middle of the tree. Yeah. And it sat there for a moment. And then it went to the top of the trees. And then slowly traversed the uh, tops of the trees. Till it came in front of us. And then poof. It was gone. It literally just shot off in the dark into disappear world it just went like that and, it, and we're all so, and there were 12 to 15 people standing there going what just yeah. happened so that was a night time through the flare yeah. that we had we had seen it um but that was definitely you know so we went back the next day and we got the the cast we actually got a couple of casts off of that that one there we had six different tracks all going into the direction where it had disappeared and potentially turned into an orb. Right. Uh, I mean, I don't know how you can't put the two together because there was this walking back and forth. It disappeared into the woods in the same place it disappeared. This blue orb showed up. The blue orb was the size of a softball, a uh, beach ball, probably bigger. And and like I said, there was no light. No. And that that no orb light. left. The Bigfoot left. The smell left. Everything. Yeah. And it was. It was <laughs> yeah. Dumb. The only sighting I've ever had was through flare so i understand i understand exactly what you guys are, are talking about um let's try to we are right here at an hour let's try to get through these questions as sure. uh, as quickly as we can i want to be respectful of everyone's time the, the first one comes from facebook user it's actually my buddy kevin he asked and this is going back to the the hoax if you hadn't seen that movie do you think you would have even noticed them? I ask because I often think what I may have missed because I didn't know better. What I may have missed because I didn't know better. Mm, that's so if that's you a good question. The movie, do you think you would have even noticed the, the footprints? Uh, yeah, there was no doubt. I was, I was a kid. It was in my backyard. All of a sudden, these ginormous footprints, and they're human-like footprints in your backyard. And, they, and it wasn't just one or two. This was what we would consider a trackway for miles. And that's why it was so overwhelmingly true because it started in one town and it ended up in another town and went yeah. through a different I mean, town. Even if we didn't see the movie, they, the, the investigators and the cops, they were all in our yards. Yeah. I, you know, it, yeah, we would have, we would have put it together anyways. I don't think the movie swayed my decision in any way, shape or form. No. I was a kid. I it was a having, cool movie. Having the, Having the footprints and they're all all the investigators there. Yeah, I think that was. I, a I think that question. did it. A great question by Kevin. I mean, you obviously yeah. would have noticed the footprints, but I don't know that they would have had the impact on you if you hadn't seen the movie. That's my opinion. That's probably true. Yeah, right. somewhere down the road, that was probably a seed that got planted, and it just sat there until we had a different experience, and then all of a sudden, holy mackerel! <laughs> Even though the beginning of it was, you know, make believe, it was still yeah. a right. real deal to a 13, 14 year old kid who didn't know it was a fake at that point. Right. Even though they're telling you it's yeah. fake, we didn't. We still didn't believe it. <laughs> and that was well after the the news had left and all that right. other stuff. I didn't find that right. out until a year later. That was a good question. Our next question comes from Troy. Troy asks, what type of fish were y'all catching and what kind of bait were you using? <laughs> That's awesome. We were using Mickey uh, Mickey fins and woolly buggers. Yeah. It was stuff that we tied. Uh, it was fly fishing. Yeah. And we were catching smallies, believe it or not. We were out looking for trout, but we were catching smallies. That's what was biting. And That's what we were taking, you know, three pound, four pound smallies on a five weight fly rod. Oh, it was crazy. I it had a whole bunch time. of fun. I'm telling you, if you get, if you can get a partner to, to do all the paddling and you can fish, go for it. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, it was same a Mickey Finn and Wooly Bugger. Same guy, Mr. Troy, from the same area. Do you ever go back to the pond area now? Or when was the last time you were there? No, it's been a number of years since we went back. 
Uh, it's probably since 2000, I don't know, maybe it's been a while. 19. Well, matter, matter of fact, we last, were, before COVID, we were just talking about going back COVID. out there. <laughs> so 2019 would have been our last trip out yeah. there from yeah. 2013. And we had gone back consistently. Uh, we went back because it was it was just something. It didn't scare us. No. It didn't scare us because nothing happened. It was just a oh, holy, what the heck was that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's just freaky. You know? But, you know, I don't know what else could have made those things. And, you know, that, that time in New York, the yelling and the tree shaking never stopped and they went together. They, it yeah. never stopped shaking and the tree yelling and, and the yelling never stopped. It, yeah. it went on consistently for 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Troy is asking that first cast that you showed, uh, what what was the material? What did y'all use to make that cast? Good question. That is dental stone. Yeah, it's got this yellow color to it. It is very good. It is really, really hard. It's it what they make dentures out of. It may, it, they do this on your teeth. Yeah. It's what they and make it, dentures uh, out of. You know, we also have plaster. You know, plaster is, is cheaper. Yeah, you go but, to Home Depot or whatever and buy your plaster. But this is what, what, what he had at the time. But I did go in and ask my uh, dentist for uh, if I could get the address so I could buy some. And he came out and gave me a five pound bag. <laughs> yeah, it was our first wow. cast. We got really carried away with it. We had, you know, this uh, evidence track thing. It's, you know, a frame that you put around a track and you can pour up to it level. So, you know, we've got like a five pound cast of this thing. But that's how big and deep it was. 17 and a half inches, eight inches wide. Three and inches that, deep. You know, that was five pounds of material. And I bet you we could have used about two more pounds. Yeah. To, to really get the. We didn't have really enough a second it. track. No. I hear that stuff one. is really, really good. I use the plaster of Paris, like you guys are talking about. But I hear yep. that stuff, the dental stuff is great. It's, it is. And uh, it's good if you've got a really good defined. Uh, if you don't want it to break. Uh, cast. Yeah, if you've got one that you don't want to break, that's what I would use, the yeah. dental stone. Yeah, I mean, it, it's harder. It picks up a lot of things, too. It picks up uh, dermal ridges. You could probably get dermal ridges better. out of it better than, a, you know, the, the you know, we'll go out and I'll buy a 20-minute mud. It's sheetrock compound. Right. And and if, you, if you're going back to do a cast and I need to get out of there, I'll bring, I'll bring my cordless drill. We'll have the water. We'll set it up and you can whip that the uh, mud till it gets hot and and then with 10 minute mud uh for drywall when you whip it with a beater like that it'll it'll harden up real quick it gets oh, hot yeah. real active uh it activates real hot and all of a sudden you've got to cast almost you know as hard as woodpecker lips in 15 minutes <laughs> you know and you can get it out of the ground and back home and and in the particular incident with the uh the regular plaster cast that's we wanted to get out of there quick so we use this 10 minute mud, just sheetrock mud. Uh, yeah. Hydrocal uh, yeah. too is good to use too. That Hydrocal that picks up a lot of dermal ridges too. Is really good. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question we got here from Freaky Geek. It's a silly question. Which one of y'all is older? Where am I? Yeah, over here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. How much older? Uh, about two years, two and a half. All right. All right. You guys want to promote anything? You guys, uh, anything you want everybody to check out before we get out of here? Uh, if you're on, on Facebook, of course, you just go to the Vogel Brothers to check us out. Like the, uh, you know, smash the button and you'll stay up to date with whatever we're doing. Uh, we've been, you know, doing a lot of podcasts, doing some local shows. We just finished a fun show at our local, the Beckett Country Store, town hall type yeah. meet and greet, whole bunch of fun. And we're doing some more of those. We've got a library, a couple library events coming up. Have a, so, have a scouting for uh Bigfoot festival coming up in June. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. So we're, we're Come all about say hi. <laughs> well, we're out in New England, Bigfoot. Yeah. I get the feeling that we just scratched the surface of you guys because we only got through a couple of encounters. So I'd love to have you back if y'all would like to come back and talk some more. We Absolutely. would love to come back. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We have plenty we to will, talk about. <laughs> we will set that up for you. But again, guys, well, I want to thank you. Awesome. For taking the time to, to come and hang out with us tonight. Good stuff. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Very good. We appreciate being be here. here. All right. Have a good night, guys. You too. Thank you. 
All right. Me and my unprofessional self. I was getting ready to say bye. Thank you. And I was muted. So <laughs> I had to rush to the mute button. <laughs> You're so professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all would so miss it if I, if I wasn't as quirky and dorky as I am. Nah, that was a good show. Yes, it was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get with those guys uh, right after here and see if we can't set up a, a round two with them. But, I agree. Uh, yeah. Everybody out there, the audience was great tonight. As always, thank you, everyone, for being respectful and having great questions and comments for our guests. You guys are the best. We thank you for all that you do. Yes, absolutely. You so, got anything before we get out of here, ma'am? Um, yes, because I'm so excited. Um, so this weekend, we don't have anyone for Saturday, but you and I have been conversing about possibly doing a members only for our members. Um, so yeah, if you haven't joined, there's still time. It's $1.99. Um, but next Tuesday, we are having Cryptids of the Corn. And I am totally fangirling <laughs> because I, they're just amazing. So yeah, next Tuesday, definitely don't miss that show for sure. Wow, that has snuck up on me. I wasn't expecting to, to have those guys this soon. That's awesome. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward to it as well. They've been on with Brian over at, at Sasquatch Odyssey. Brian talked about what uh, good guys they were. I, I've never met them. I've uh, listened to some of their show, so uh, I'm going to listen to a little bit more before we bring them on. But, yeah, that was a good get by you. Yeah, I was so excited to talk to Justin and his wife, bless her heart. She is, I think she's about maybe 29 or 30 weeks pregnant with twins. So, you know, we're just hoping that the girls just stay nicely tucked until at least after their show. But if not, I'm going to see, you know, Jay could still come on. Jay's just as cool. So, yeah. All right, so yeah, guys, tune in Tuesday for that one. For our members, we will see y'all Saturday night. Until we talk to y'all then or whenever, y'all be good. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Bye. Bye.